The ancient pyramids have always been a subject of fascination and wonder for people around the world. These grand structures built thousands of years ago continue to amaze us with their size, complexity and sheer mystery. But have you ever wondered how scientists determine the age of the oldest pyramid? It's a question that has puzzled many, and the answer lies in the cutting-edge technology and scientific techniques used by researchers to unravel the secrets of these incredible monuments. In this video, we'll explore some of the methods that scientists use to date the age of the oldest pyramid and shed light on the fascinating world of pyramidology. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and join us on a journey through time to discover the secrets of the ancient pyramids. The age of the oldest pyramid can be determined using various methods. One of the most common methods is carbon dating, which measures the decay of carbon-14 isotopes in organic materials found in or near the pyramid. Scientists can also use dendrochronology, which involves analyzing the growth patterns of tree rings found in wooden objects inside or near the pyramid. This method can determine the age of wood and therefore the approximate age of the pyramid. By combining multiple methods, scientists can obtain a more accurate estimate of the age of the oldest pyramid. The Invention of Radiocarbon Dating Radiocarbon dating was invented by American chemist Willard Libby in the late 1940s. Libby was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1960 for his work in developing the technique. At the time, Libby was working on the Manhattan Project, the US government's top secret project to develop the first atomic bomb. He was interested in finding a way to use the radioactive isotopes produced by nuclear reactions to study the natural world. Libby realized that carbon-14, a radioactive isotope of carbon, could be used to date organic materials. He reasoned that if the amount of carbon-14 in an organism could be measured, the age of the organism could be calculated based on the known rate of decay of carbon-14. To test his idea, Libby used a Geiger counter to measure the radioactivity of a sample of willow wood, which he knew was about 5,000 years old based on historical records. He found that the amount of carbon-14 in the sample was only about half of what would be expected if the sample were brand new, confirming his hypothesis. Libby's initial work on radiocarbon dating was published in 1949 and the technique quickly gained widespread use in the fields of archaeology, geology and other disciplines. Today, radiocarbon dating is widely recognized as one of the most powerful tools available for dating ancient materials. Limitations of Carbon Dating The varying amounts of C14 in the atmosphere from year to year and even season to season are the cause of radiocarbon dating's limitations. A piece of organic matter's lifespan before it was utilized by people in the environment where it was discovered is another question. Despite these challenges, advances in radiocarbon dating research continue to reduce the margin of error. Reference tables have been developed for the quantity of C14 present in the atmosphere, dating back to the old kingdom of the pyramids of Egypt, using really old plants like bristle cone pines in California and oaks from Ireland. If a log with measured rings can be located in an archaeological site, dendrochronology, a study that examines tree ring development, can be used with this data to produce even more precise dates. This knowledge has not yet been applied there, as evidenced by the rough ends of the wooden beams that still exist in the pyramids of Djoser and Sneferu. Edgar Cayce Funds Testing Edgar Cayce was a person who lived a long time ago and he believed that the pyramids, which are huge structures in Egypt, were very old. 12,500 years old to be exact. In 1984, a group of people who believed in Casey's ideas went to Egypt and collected 64 samples of the materials used to build the pyramids. They did this to see if Casey's ideas were true. The person who collected the samples, Mark Lanner, became interested in ancient Egypt because he was friends with Casey's children and shared their belief about the pyramids. The samples they collected were very small, like tiny black dots, and were taken from the mortar that holds the stones together. Mark Leonard used to support Edgar Cayce's ideas about Egyptology, but it's unclear when he started believing in traditional Egyptology instead. Meanwhile, Zahi Hawass denies ever being connected to the Cayce Foundation, even though he received funding from them and spoke at their conference twice. The Cayce Foundation used to say the Great Pyramid was built around 3000 BC, instead of 2500 BC, but this theory was rejected by science. Now, people who believe in a 12,500-year-old Giza civilization are focusing on the Great Sphinx since it can't be dated using radiocarbon dating. 